the school metaphor. Let's start. Yeah. But I like the unlocking achievement metaphor. Yeah, whoa. Maybe it will. A lot of metaphors in here. So many metaphors. <clears throat> away it's fnf q and a hey everyone welcome to fnf q and a number 33 as always i'm benjamin j but this time we've got mr christian awesome with you so um if you don't know christian yet christian is one of our educators for form and function as well as one of our stylists at the hairloft and so we thought that it would be as the the final episode of 2015 to be a fun thing to get two different perspectives on these questions as we go forward, we want to try and incorporate more of our team into more of the stuff that we're putting out so that you can get to know everybody. But um, before we get started, why don't you introduce you know, yourself, what we're doing, and our goals. Uh, hey guys, my name is Christian. I've been with uh, the Hairloft and Form and Function for seven years. Uh, I'm super passionate about education. I really love sharing with people all the things that I've learned in my career that have helped me to be confident and successful and, and happy, fulfilled in what I do. And uh, we're really excited to, to share with you guys this year, this new year, uh, some really interesting content that you guys can use yourself to help yourselves grow. Um, so a couple of workshops that, that we'll be putting together as well as bringing in other educators to, to again, share with you, you know, the, the exciting and the, the passion that is craft hairdressing. And uh, we're really excited to bring you guys in. Yeah, so uh, with that, let's get into some questions. So I've been in a salon for three weeks and have yet to sell any retail. Do you have any tips on how to sell? Uh, three weeks without a sale certainly is a long time to not have anything move off the shelf. Um, maybe it's because you're not familiar enough with the product yet, so you don't necessarily know how to use it. Um, but if you are familiar with the product, I would say from my perspective is that you're not connecting what the guest wants with, with how you are using or why the product is best for them. When we do our, our, our product coaching and uh, our product knowledge with our team, one of the things that we try to emphasize is understanding why would the guest need or want this product and really emphasizing that before you even get into you know, how to use it or what the benefits are. Just based on here's your hair, here's what you want your hair to do, that's what or why you're going to need this product. Yeah, I, I think another thing too is to, to look for problems, look for challenges uh, in, in the conversation, the consultation that you have with your, your guest. One of the things that I do is I, I look for doors, right? In the, com in the conversation that I'm having with my guests, right? I'm collecting all this information and what I'm looking for are problems. I'm looking for challenges that my guest is having uh, in a multiple different areas, right? So um, if that challenge can be solved through the haircut that I'm going to do, if that can be solved through the color placement that I'm going to do, then great. Uh, but there are a lot of situations in which the, the, the answer is, you know, a physical product that they can use. And so I'm looking for those kinds of holes um, throughout the, the service, throughout the consultation, um, so that then I can gear my conversation towards some of those things. But I think going back to what Ben said, you, you have to have a really strong working knowledge of those products themselves. And so in the beginning, that may be just mastering and understanding and knowing the front and the back side of maybe five products, right? And then grow, growing from there, your favorites maybe. But that's what I would try to do is, is really look for, for challenges. One, one, of my, one of my favorite like dialogue tips to try and get people to understand it is the word because. Because I think that it relates to the guest that you are listening. Right? When a guest says, oh, I don't like my fine hair, and then when you are making a product recommendation, you say, well, because you have fine hair, we want to build that up. It, it brings it back to, I was listening to what you said. I did hear the things that you want to solve, the challenges like Christian's saying, but it helps open up the opportunity for you to be able to make that sale. My question is about your talks to the stylist of the hair loft about career path. Can you take me through your conversations? What questions do you ask? What are some of the paths your stylists go on? This is a great question, especially with the new year right around the corner, because I think it's the perfect opportunity if you haven't yet had conversations with people about this topic, to be able to say, like, starting the new year, what do you want to get out of this year? And uh, I think that, that truthfully, one thing to understand is that not everybody's motivated by the same thing. You know, some people are going to be more motivated financially. They want to make more money. Some people are going to be more 
uh, excited about time off or vacation time. Um, and, and I think that understanding what motivates people is a great way to start a career path conversation. Uh, also understanding that there's going to be different levels of participation in terms of what career paths people are going to be interested in. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, one of the things that, that we do at the Hair Loft is, aside from the, the different tiers or level systems, most salons have something like that in place um, where you know you meet a certain premium percentage or service dollar per guest or take home dollar per guest and once you maintain that for a certain period of time then you move up into the next level right. and that's that's pretty much like I would say the standard right yeah, in the industry is. and so we have that in place but in addition to that we we also have other opportunities and other things that people can get involved in if they choose to so as you move up in those different tier levels not only will you get maybe an, an increase in pay or maybe a little bit more time off, vacation-wise, or whatever that looks like. Right. Um, you also then have the option maybe to participate in this, right? This video shoot, or you know, creating content for the salon's Facebook page, or right. uh, traveling when we do different classes school and visits events, and school like visits, that. and things like that. And, and the reason I say, em uh, or I want to emphasize the option too, is because some hairdressers are happy doing hair, right? Like what they envisioned their career being was, you know, being booked out a certain amount of time and, and working really hard, but then having that time with their families. While other hairdressers are really enamored by the, the prospect of being able to teach at a, at a trade show or something like that. And so we we allow those as options as you move up, but it's not required of everyone. Right. I think that almost <laughs> like, um, think back to maybe like high school or something where you had your curriculum that you had to do, but then you had options of if you wanted to be on the basketball team or if you wanted to participate in a certain club, they were extracurriculars. And so what we're saying is for a career path, there is going to be the curriculum, the numbers that you need to do in order to, to move up and graduate to the next level to become level two or level three stylist. However, as you go up, it unlocks an achievement or it unlocks the ability for you to be on the education team. It, it gives you the, the possibility to be more involved in the hiring process. And so there's no way to really like lay out a foundation of what your career path should be, but those are some of the things that we try and emphasize with our career path is that here is what you need to do, here's what you can do. And that, that right now is working really well for us and it's getting the team excited and yeah. wanting to grow and participate more and, and take on more responsibility. Do you believe all salons should require a protege or assistance program before they're able to perform behind the chair? Uh, let me think this one out. I, ideally, I would say yes. Right. But that, it isn't always an option that's available. Like, yeah. back home where I'm from, assistance is not a thing. You know, like, True. You, just, you just start. Where I remember where I got my job, I couldn't assist. None of the, the hairdressers there were, they were all too busy to really, like, Put me through any sort of program like to really like think one up and put it together mm -hmm. it's just it's just not part of the culture there and i've been to a lot of places before where assistance is not part of the culture within that town and so nobody like people can't even fathom how that would be, how that would happen yeah you know what i mean like i remember when i went to blue and they were telling me how the clients were even mad about assistance because they were like i don't want anyone else touching my hair but the person sure. i'm paying you know so ideally i see the benefits of having an assistant program because you you bypass the problems that you would have or the mistakes that you would make by learning from the successes and the failures of the person who's teaching you. Right. I see the benefits of that, but I don't think it's a reality in a lot of places. Do you think though that they, because I, I agree, I think that you almost probably learn more through your assisting and protege mm -hmm. program than you do while you're in school. Yeah. But do you think that in those areas where that's not the culture, that those places have the opportunity to change the culture, you know, I think, like I think they they could. Couldn't it come through guest education to say, well, one of the reasons that everyone on oh, our yeah. team is so good is because we have this program, and I while do. it may be, be different than the experience you've had in the past, it's one I of do. the things that make us so unique. I do, and I and I, I like I said, I said ideally, right? right? I think that everybody yeah. should have an assistant program. But here's the thing is that things like assistant programs, although they may be important, are not urgent, right? They're, they're important, but they're not urgent. And so people 
maybe even though they might say like, oh, I, I could change the culture and I would like for this to happen, or like that's not more important right now than me trying to figure out payroll right. or figuring yeah. out you know the mortgage. So I'm not going to worry about that right yeah. now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and in a in a smaller operation. Yeah, it's one of the things where because I don't have any history in another salon, this right. is why getting more perspectives on this is better. Um, I know how we have done it mm -hmm. since 1980, and I know the size of the operation that we like. I have never been in the salon where we had under 14 stylists. Yeah. Like that's just basically our, the life that I've always lived. So, but you're right, there are bigger picture items like rent, like payroll, yeah. that if it is one owner and she or he has four or five employees, that mm -hmm. tends to be the average size of a salon. Right. There may be other things that do take precedent, but I would say that once you get your systems in line for that stuff, it would still be highly valuable I agree that if you are going to be taking on new talent that you do have some way for them to learn yeah and if you don't have a program outsourcing it yeah you know finding awesome workshops mm -hmm. to send people to that maybe and, and honestly like trying to get out of just the manufacturer supplied stuff and I know that we're very biased towards that because it's what we're offering right but even if it wasn't us I would say try and find things that are that are um, product free necessarily so that it's not just we're teaching you how to use this one product but we're teaching you how to do a technique that you can use with any product yes or any tool um, but yeah I, uh, I would agree you know I think that it, it's important but maybe not your number one but it's pretty close yeah pretty high up there so uh, with that that's the end of the show so um, we wish you guys a, a happy new year uh, a happy, healthy, profitable 2016. And we're going to keep doing shows. We're going to go shoot a new video right now. So anything else? Uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>